Okay, the calorie information pledge applies to both food eaten inside and outside the home. Uh, about one in six meals are eaten outside the home, and the hope is, hope is that people will be given the opportunity to make healthier choices uh, when eating out, and to encourage food businesses to make healthier choices more available. And to the best of our, my knowledge, our University Department of Sandwiches and other things that must contain mayo hasn't signed up to this pledge, but I digress. Um, the quality information is, is to be provided per portion, or item, or meal, and for multi-portion or sharing items, a number of portions will also be supplied. Now, the information should be displayed clearly, prominently, in a way that is appropriate for the consumers. Uh, as of 14th of March this year, 38 organisations had signed up to the out-of-home calorie labelling pledge, including McDonald's, Pizza Hut, Greggs, and JD Weatherspoon. Um, it's been a while since I've been at Greg, so I can't comment whether the information up in the shops. When this lecture was given live today, a student said she had seen the information in the shop, so well done, Greg's. It can also be found on the company's website, which is a bit less accessible, it has to be said. Uh, and there's a cheese pasty containing what it contains. Uh, I, I mentioned a bit earlier on that the alcohol pledges seem to be in the area of behaviour. Um, there's nutritional issues as well. One of our final years based our public health and health promotion campaign work on responsible drinking and female students. Uh, she took a bit a different task from the typical one which shows the consequences of excessive drinking and focused on the calorific content of drinks. Uh, she produced some great, great campaign material um, as opposed to that and one thing she also produced was the periodic table of booze. As a chemist I'm somewhat tickled by this. Um, this poster as well, but elements uh, sorry, uh, of this could be incorporated into apps, etc. Uh, we could do a lot more in communication than we used to do a few years ago, and the possibilities for getting messages across, both good and bad, uh, are quite remarkable now. Okay, um, not everyone has taken the best view of the public of the responsibility deal. More of this in a moment, but first, Jamie, uh, who isn't too keen. Um, I'm not sure that the anyone would, well, he's, he's accused the coalition of killing British people. There's probably a slight exaggeration there. Uh, but if you want to hear what he said, I think there's a video link from that article in The Guardian. Um, not everyone thinks the responsibility is a good deal, is a good idea. Um, I'm, I, I'm, my view is that um, time and evidence will tell. Uh, Jamie Oliver is a well-known figure, of course. And although I would never watch one of his cooking shows, he did a great job in improving the often dire quality of school meals in the UK. Uh, one of the changes the new government has made uh, has been to the School Foods Trust and I have to come off the fence and say what they've done is uh, not 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 have me best pleased. Uh, the School Foods Trust has been, in my opinion, the most successful government intervention in nutrition since Jack Drummond's World War II diet plan. Uh, converting the School Foods Trust into a charity and allowing free schools to opt out uh, bad decisions in my view. But again, time and uh, the evidence will tell. Uh, we have a mountain in the climb, especially with respect to areas such as alcohol. Um, the Children's Food Campaign response, published later in le the, about the back end of 2011, was a bit more considered than Jamie and highlighted a number of potentially important issues. Um, they collated the DOH data into a table showing what pledges organisations had been signed up to and what they had not signed up to. Uh, they also reflected on the situations an organisation has signed up to a pledge which wasn't especially relevant to their situation. I'm not going to go through all the comments here. You can read the document yourself and make up your own mind. Uh, in the missing members criticism they point out that many well-known organisations I'd failed to sign up, for example, to the out of off, out of home calorie label pledge, even though it's pretty relevant to their organisational activities. Uh, the organisations concerned have placed nutrition information on their websites, but in many cases haven't yet committed themselves to providing this information in menus in their outlets. Uh, as I mentioned a bit earlier on, time and evidence will tell how effective this is, hopefully. Uh, another aspect highlighted by the Children's Food Campaign is what they describe as weak evaluation and enforcement. Um, this is an aspect which does con concern me a little bit. Uh, the DOH has made a million pound available for monitoring and evaluating the responsibility deal. Uh, from the point of view of in, an in, in, individual, that sounds a lot. Uh, but if you think about it, it's 40 people getting paid £25,000 for a year. Um, whether it's enough re re remains to be seen. 
um, especially when you are monitoring a major component of this country's public health response. Um, I honestly don't know whether it's enough. Uh, the plans for monitoring and evaluating the deal are still a bit sketchy, perhaps understandably, which is not to say that you won't develop over time. Um, some information was given in the first issue of the Public Health Responsibility Deal Bulletin, available from the Responsibility Deal website, uh, published in July of 2011. Uh, monitoring will be done by, by, on a range of uh, factors. On the basis of self-reporting, which must happen once a year, uh, but also there will be external monitoring as well. Uh, the self-reporting can be done in publications such as annual reports but will be done using a standard template so it can be included in the website. Um, as well as self-reporting, the DOH Research and Development Directorate through its policy research program is looking at the feasibility of design options for an independent evaluation of the impact of elements of responsibility deal. Uh, this has been developed by the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine who have quite a lot of expertise in public health and epidemiology and a stakeholder reference group. Uh, now I did some digging to find out who's on the stakeholder reference group and I wasn't able to track it down, it may be because it's not published yet or I couldn't find it. If you look for reference groups in the NHS you'll find reference groups for things like diabetes which will include clinicians, nurses, people with diabetic uh, people have diabetes, so hopefully eventually we'll be able to find out who is on these responsibility groups. Okay, now the annual report of the Marmot, the annual update of the Marmot, Marmot report, as I mentioned, normally published in late February. Uh, the Marmot report team recently moved to the UCL Institute of Health Equity. Uh, that was launched in November 2001 to build on previous work to tackle inequalities health. Uh, still led by Sir Michael Marmot, of course. Uh, I'll just have a little dig so we can find the website. Uh, there's the website there. And uh, right on the first on the front page of the website, we have Healthy Fair Society, Healthy Lives, the Marmot Report, uh, giving some indication of how important it is. Um, the current work includes a review of social determinants of health, the health divide for the World Health Organization, European region. Uh, okay, here's a headline from a press release from which has just been done for the two years on data um, and they, the first line of the press release was health inequalities widen in most parts of England. Uh, the new data shows that life expectancy improved for most local authorities in England uh, but that inequalities increased. Um, this comparison is based on baseline health inequalities uh, monitoring indicators published uh, a year ago. Uh, Sir so Michael was asked by various members of the press uh, about what was going to happen to health inequalities as a result of the coalition government's policy changes. He said that he was concerned, particularly in relation to cuts in local authority funding of early years. Uh, but that's an important part of Marmot's brief, to watch, to evaluate and to comment. Uh, with a robust monitoring framework, uh, they should be able to report appropriately to government policy changes and comment in confidence. Uh, there's a link there to Sir Michael's blog, well worth having a read of. Um, the point of robust data is that figures speak for themselves, and although these indicators have improved generally, inequalities have whined since the 2011 update. Uh, so, for example, he has um, shown some development in, uh, shown changes in the development of children at the age of five, which improved from 56% to 59%. But what about the other 41% who haven't improved? Okay, um, this is the uh, this is from the material produced in the update. Not all of the local authorities with the worst inequalities in the northeast, just most of them. Okay, now under the latest information for Borough, uh, this is where mate, you may need a cold flannel for your forehead. First reminder of the spine chart conventions. Okay, the black bar in the middle is the average value for England. Uh, over here is England's best, England's worst and this will be the regional value as and also we'll see in a moment the local value. Again published by the London Health Observatory. Um, the health outcomes are grouped by males, females and social determinants of health. Uh, the first two in indicators include uh, life expectancy, disability free life expectancy. The third includes child development, the number of needs. Uh, and uh, and housing indicators. Okay, as I mentioned, the black bars are national averages. The green diamonds are regional, 
and the red dots are Middlesbrough in this case. You'll notice that all of our local indicators in the red, some of them very much so. Um, here's an example of what it's actually comparing is, is the best life expectancy across the local authority with the worst. So in this case it means that on average men in the least deprived areas live 14.8 years longer than men in the most deprived areas of the town. Similarly for women the figure is 11.3 years. Okay, on that depressing but important note, thanks for listening. <laughs>